Where do engineers go wrong? Ha! Whoa, let me, uh, let me count the ways. <laughs> Chris in College Station, Texas writes to me, he says, Hi Paul, I enjoy your videos and think you are a talented engineer. Why, thank you, sir. Um, can you explain why cables make a difference? I want to have an open mind to this issue. As you've said in the past, the engineering community insists that beyond basic things like shielding, they do not make a difference. So I'm curious, where you think the engineering community goes wrong? I saw an acupuncturist once who was brutally honest and he said, I think acupuncture works, but I have no idea why. Is this one of those situations? Thanks, Chris. Oh, goodness. Well, I think I'm going to address Chris's basic question. I, I don't know that I want to answer the why cables make a difference because I'll tell you why. Here, here, here's what's interesting about all this. Even the, all the times, and look back through the, the thousand videos I've done so far. There are many of them talking about cables and we can talk about cable geometry, cable, con you know, the, the way they're constructed, the materials that go into it, the shielding, the, um, oh gosh, there's a hundred different things we can talk about, characteristic impedances, the dielectrics, the insulation, you know, types, how much is absorbed, the skin effect, there's all kinds of things we can talk about when it comes to cables and we have and I would encourage you to look back through my videos and and find out what I've had to say about cables. But I, I think I want to talk about the broader issue, Chris, if it's okay with you. Where do engineers go wrong? Why don't engineers accept things they cannot explain nor measure. Well, part of the, the reason, and, and it's, it's a good thing that they don't, because there's what we call the scientific method, right? And science is real, despite what a lot of people in, I, I don't understand our country, I really don't, when we, we can have, you know, well, that's a fake fact. I don't buy that part of science. I buy this part. I buy the part where the doctors tell me they're going to fix me up, and that part, that's good. <laughs> I buy that part. I like that part of science. I don't like this part of science. It's telling me the earth's warming or whatever is happening. You know, and, and no, I'm not getting political on you. I want to keep this a safe space. Um, but we can't be selective with science. We just can't. There is a scientific method. Scientists always question. They don't want to, you know, believe in things that they can't prove, but they routinely do, and we call those theories and hypotheses, and what's where we dream. You know, why, when, when Einstein first proposed the idea of light bending with gravity, people were like, you're out of your frickin' mind. That's impossible. You, you know, that, that, that space is curved and that time is, is not uh, fixed, that it depends on your viewpoint, all that kind of stuff. And that was just Einstein. Uh, you know, forget quantum mechanics, which is even weirder, but we know it works, right? So engineers are somewhat like scientists in that we like to have things proven to us and in many cases we really should. I don't want to say like when, when we design this, you know, this, this amplifier, there are certain immutable laws that I have to deal with. I have no choice but to know that it takes X amount of current to make this work, it takes X amount of voltage, it, 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 if I don't have the right bandwidth, blah blah woof woof, right? The, I mean I can't bend the laws of physics to make me happy. They just exist, they are what they are. And so the problem is when we as engineers get trapped in this notion that we, A, and this is bad, that we know everything, that we went to school, we learned it all, and this is the way it works, and this is the way it doesn't work, well, that's where we get in trouble. Because when that happens, we don't allow for the things that we don't understand. Right? I may not, as an engineer, I may not understand exactly, oh, how a tunnel diode works. Right? I don't know all the ins and outs of tunnel diodes. I can use tunnel diodes. 
I can uh, make circuits operate in specific ways by looking up on a sheet, but I don't truly understand them. I don't know their physics. And so when they do something strange, I can either say, well, that's not in the data book, so it's either not doing it, or I just don't understand it. Likewise, when we hear differences in cables, when we hear differences that common audio measurements, THD, IM, Fourier, transforms, when they don't show those things, when they are inadequate to show that which we perceive, that doesn't mean that which we perceive is wrong. It just means the tests, the measurement data, is not adequate or up to the test. That's uh, to the task. That's, that's about all it means. So I think that's where engineers go wrong. Um, most engineers I know have, have great imagination. They kind of get it. Um, and, but look, we're all humans, right? So some are stiffer and some are looser. Some get it, some don't. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.